Hello everybody, welcome to Hashtag Friday Sews. Hope everyone is well and they've had a really good week. Now, we all know, but I will repeat it. Hashtag Friday Sews was created by the lovely Jen. She is the queen of Hashtag Friday Sews. She invented it, created it, and it is meant that we can all get together on a Friday and chat about what we've been sewing and what we're making and generally about life. And she's made it so easy to find everybody by just tapping in hashtag Friday sews into the YouTube search bar and bah, up your pop. So thanks for joining me today. Now I've got a couple of really successful makes. Now that's my perspective, but I hope you agree and also a challenge, another challenge for me as a grandmother that's come about, so I'll talk more about that at the end. So I'm sure you all want to know whether my hubby liked all his presents that I've been banging on about for weeks and weeks. And, and of course this now means he can go back to watching my videos and won't unsubscribe from me. So the best I could do was to get him to pose for me some still photos. So I've made a little movie of the things I made him and I will put it in here. Now the only thing I had to do was, as I suspected, to shorten the sleeves on the sweatshirt and I mean I know they were meant to be longer because you put your thumb through but they were so long on him as you could see. So I chopped that much off um, and he's got a nice small hem on them now. I will put a link down below of all the patterns that I used but um, he's very happy with them so yay! <laughs> Now I have to start with what I think is my most favourite make, definitely of 2023, but maybe even last year as well. And it's not because of the skill involved or my sewing, it's the fabric was just beautiful. It was that chambray I got from My Fabrics in Germany. Now I did go on to the website to see if they still sell it. They show a picture of it on the top sort of border on their website but I couldn't find it, so I'm really sorry. But I used the New Look 6095. Um, it's very funny because I love watching um, So Lovely With Grace. Uh, she's fairly new to the Friday Sews and the YouTube community, but you've got to go and watch her because she is amazing and everything she makes looks stunning on her. And it's really funny because I talked about this pattern last week, she talked about this pattern last week, so it's a shame we didn't get together and do it, but hopefully I will meet her at the expo in Florida. But anyway, go and take a look at her channel, she's amazing. Anyway, so I made, I was going to make the cap sleeves, for the first time in a long time, I made a muslin, I hate calling it muslin, I call it like a dummy dress, because I wanted the fit to be just right, because when I bought this pattern a few years ago, when I got patterns, I went through a stage of straight away cutting them out in the size that I thought I was gonna need. That was crazy because years later, of course, I opened this out and it was a size 10. And I, I would have liked to have gone just slightly bigger or tested slightly bigger. As luck would have it, it's, it's okay. But what I did find is I needed to make some changes. Um, because this fabric was so lovely, I just didn't want to muck the dress up. So I did a couple of things. I raised the waistline by a centimetre. 
and I brought the shoulders in because what tends to happen on woven tops for me, I get this gappy bit. Now, I'm fine with that normally, but because I was going to wear it to the expo and there would be a room, rooms full of sewists, I thought this has got to be just right. So I did the thing where you cut along the shoulders, you draw a line, cut along the shoulders and you just move it down slightly. And that's, so I did about a centimetre either side and that's just worked out perfectly for me. I was going to make the cap sleeves, as I think I said, I put them on the dummy dress but they, they're really short and a strange length and my husband did say it's not adding much to it and, and he was right and I didn't want to put a longer sleeve on so I left the sleeves off and made it sleeveless. Um, that meant it's got one of those uh, facings inside, sort of long facing inside and you turn it inside out and whatever. I don't often do that but um, yeah it has made a nice finish certainly on the armholes. So I was very pleased with the dress and I will show you now. Now, as I said, it was lovely to work with. I did, it calls for a normal zip in the back. I did put a uh, invisible zip in the back. I, I mean, it's not perfect because you can see it. I do prefer doing an invisible zip. I, I tend to make a mess of the other one with it, the flap going over and it's always a bit dodgy. So. I thought no, I will do an invisible sip because I've got that foot where it divides the two sides and it does, I just, I just find it easier. So I did that and I'm really pleased with it and I will be wearing it at the expo and especially as it's quite light, it's not too, it's got a bit of room in it, um, so I hope you like it too. Now the second successful make I did this week was I talked about these two fabrics and you all said, go for it, colour block them. So I did. I had to keep it fairly simple um, because I didn't have a massive amount of the beautiful blue. Um, and I pulled out my most favourite beginner's t-shirt because it doesn't have any insert sleeves. You can just put like a sleeve band on the end. It's really simple. So therefore it was really simple to split the pattern piece and I split it just below the where the arm, sort of the curve of the arm will go over. And I just split it, added the seam allowance and then put it back in. Also, because I had a go at doing these shoulders, the same things happens with this top. That it's just a little bit too wide for me because I must have narrow shoulders. Um, the funny thing is I met with my lovely friend Sue this week and she was making, she's made a few of these. She's gone back to sewing after many years and she actually has the same problem and she's booked a class, a one-on-one -on -one class on how to do this shoulder adjustment. So I'm really interested to find out what they say to do as if I've done it right. But that was an amazing coincidence. Anyway, here is the top. I I just love it. I just love it. I know it's a simple colour blocking. Um, the two fabrics did work well together. This was a really light, um, I think it was a bamboo jersey. Um, couldn't, I can't remember where I got it from. And this was a double Bosch poly and I, it's quite a cheap fabric. I don't know what I used it for, how long I've had it. I just can't remember. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I started off just having the plain bit and then I thought no I'm going to put the band on the edge with the contrasting fabric so I'm really happy with that and I dug out some uh, white cropped trousers for you to model it instead of just putting it over jeans like I normally do so I'm happy. Now I'm going to put a bit of cover stitch filming in here because someone had asked me about it. Now this is a warning for any of you professional cover stitch people. Yeah, you may need to look away right at the end of the video, but I just thought I'd put it in and show how I use the cover stitch in case anybody's just interested. Somebody did ask me in the comments a while ago about uh, showing me how I use the cover stitch. Now, this is not an instructional video of how to use the cover stitch, but I'm just gonna show how I use the cover stitch. Obviously, it's fairly new to me. So all I've done is pressed that hem under and I line it up with the feet 
initially I just sort of feel. So what I'm feeling for here is the the where the um, the seam is going to be. So where the middle and I line up where the ridge is in the middle of the three notches. So I'm going to take that pin up. So I think it's about right. And I just start going. I'm always hesitant when I start pressing the cover stitch but, uh, pedal because it's really fast. So I'm just going to set off. And I've done a few stitches. I'm going to lift the foot. I'm going to pull out these threads here. I'm going to put it back down again. So I'm going to just remove the pin. I thought as I was shortening the sweatshirt I made for my husband's sleeves, I thought I'd show you because it's only a quick bit of sewing. So I just carry on, just lining up that ridge with hopefully the centre line. And I'm going to line up these three lines of stitching with these three notches, hopefully. A bit slower. Right, so one more full up. Right, so I'm going to lift the needles high using the wheel. I lift the foot. I get my, um, what do they call it? <laughs> Little uh, purple fang and I pull, get behind the threads, pull them out, then I snip them. Then I should be able to just pull this away. <laughs> oh, you can see the tugging. I'm not going to edit that out because that's how it is sometimes. So you just pull away and hopefully you've got the lined up bit of stitching. Now you get bonus points if you spotted that there was a bit that wasn't caught under. And that is what happens. I'm not going to pretend I'm perfect at it. But all I do is get a needle and thread and I overstitch the bit that I'm missing. Because who's going to notice? Apart from that, I did a really good job. It was just where that join was. So there we go. That is his shortened sleeves. I hope you enjoyed that. The realistic view of cover stitching. I did a quick bit of alteration this week. I have a, I made this one a few years ago, 6529. Um, I made the longer version, but the trouble was because it was longer, I never really wore it. And yet I absolutely love this fabric. It was a super soft, uh, sweatshirt knit with cherry blossoms on it and that's just me to a T and it was just so it just sat in my wardrobe and I wasn't wearing it so we were just about to go out my daughter and I a couple of weeks ago and I looked at it I thought I want to wear that and I chopped off the bottom of it I literally just cut the bottom went out for the day and came back and I thought I'm gonna have to alter that properly so that's what I did this week with the bottom chopped off I then had just enough to turn over and make a hemband on the bottom, just a little hemband. So it is now at a much more wearable and usable length. Um, so I'm really happy I revived that. I do want to do another bit of alteration this week. I made this um, long shirt dress uh, a few years ago in some beautiful fabric. It was this really thin needle cord flower fabric. And it is beautiful and I made it really well. Again, I just don't wear it. Um, so as you can see in the picture, it's a really awkward length. And again, it would be worn with leggings. And I don't often, certainly don't wear navy leggings. So well, it's too short for tights. So I thought maybe I'll turn that into a shirt. So as you can see, I've kind of bunched it up to see what it could look like. Um, I think it's a winner. The only thing I might have to do is lose the side seam pockets. But that's okay, that's okay. It's got little top pockets anyway. But I would really like to save this because I don't have any shirts. The, I did something weird on the sleeve again. The same thing as I did, I think, on the other one is I chopped it off short and I put some little weird band on the end. As I said, I did make it a few years ago. I can't quite remember why I did that. 
But anyway, I think hopefully it will look nice as a shirt. So I want to get on and do that next week. Okay, so my challenge for next week. We found out that it's World Book Day next Friday. So I thought, that's easy. Katie will probably come to me and say that Ollie wants to be a character, hopefully a Ninjago character with dinner, costumes already made. No, the school have decided to go do things a little differently this time and they want to do a vocabulary, <laughs> vocabulary, can't even say it, um, parade. So they want all the children to go dressed as words. Where'd you start with that? I said to Ollie, what is your favourite word? And he said, snake. He does, he loves snakes. Whenever we go to any kind of reptile centre or anything, he just, he's got all these furry long snakes in his bed as well. So fair enough, I thought it is a word. It's a good word for them because you've got the sn, the s, s, n, sn, ache. I thought, brilliant, it is a good word. But I thought, what am I gonna do? I don't really want to send him dressed as a snake because he's got to be in that um, outfit all day. He's got to be in school all day with it. So it's got to be comfy. So this is, this is technology for you. This is my plan. <laughs> okay, excuse the drawing. What I thought I would get, uh, make a brown jogging set. Surprise, surprise. And of course I'm going to use this one because I use this one and it wins every time. So I'm going to use this Simplicity 8526 because that worked before. So I'm going to make a brown jogging set. He's then going to have a snake going round one leg. So I haven't thought it completely through, but yeah, a piece of fabric that'll be wrapped around. And I'll have to hand stitch that on because I'd have to do the joggers first, then hand stitch that snake on. Then obviously going up to, I don't quite know what I'm going to do with the sweatshirt and the, the joggers, how I'm going to combine the two to make the snake continuous but it'll be around his back go around him and then eventually come up with a snake head over his shoulder and then across the front he can have the word snake sorry if it's all backwards the idea of the brown is he's going to be a tree and there's a snake going around him so what I thought I'd do on the arms um because it'd be a bit plain otherwise I'm gonna um applique some felt green leaves gonna make the hood and make put some leaves on the top as well so here's the tree snake going round okay so I was with him the other day so he chose some fabrics um, he chose a brilliant bit of snake fabric so this is what the snake is going to be made out of um, it's like a curtain it's not quite curtain fabric but it, it is a substantial cotton so that should be okay I might make it slightly padded only slightly padded just to make it a bit more 3d and popping up a bit I was on a zoom call last night with everyone and I cut loads of leaves out, out of some felt <laughs> as you do um, I also have made the word snake to go on the front obviously I've got to stitch that on but hopefully that will go on the front I've got to make I'm not gonna sew this yet because I'm gonna make up the sweatshirt front and just make sure because I think that might be too big but I might have to make it a little bit smaller which is why it's all pun pinned on and I've got this is the best bit it is browner in reality it looks pink on the camera but this was as brown as I could get for sweatshirt fabric at short notice so that's that I mean the two go quite nicely together actually so that's what I'm going to be doing this week and luckily we have a quiet weekend my husband's just got a gig so I've got to get cracking on that obviously the jogging set won't take the time it'll be doing the snake all the way around so just want to say good luck to any other people out there that are having to make something for world book day I have a loft full of book characters that my children wore to world book day but no, it had to be something different. So <laughs> wish me luck and good luck to everyone else out there. Now, I have made a couple of other things this week, but they are top secret. Um, you don't have to wait much longer though. Keep your eye on YouTube during the next week and there will be a little secret collab. So I can't show you those things, but you don't have much longer to wait. You have got to see this. 
I bought something from Amazon this week, a new magnetic pin cushion. Now I didn't spend a great deal amount on it, two or three pounds I think it was. Brilliant. I've got, no, I've got several of them but I just lose them all the time. So I put some pins on it. Look at this. They all jump to the edge. I mean they do not want to be on this pin cushion. It's ridiculous. What I think's happened is the, and um, I was chatting to Jen last night, I think the magnets have been put the wrong way round. So the pins are just fighting to get off. They should gather in the middle. Very luckily, I bought two because they were only a couple of pounds. This one worked. <laughs> so I have this strange pin cushion that wants to fight and a normal pin cushion. So any ideas, anyone? I mean, it does make it easier to, you know, just pull a pin off the side. Very strange indeed. Now, obviously, the photos I'm going to leave you at the end were from the weekend in Devon. We had a great time. So, a um, bit cloudy on the Saturday, but the sun came out on the Sunday and it was just glorious. It was sort of 15 degrees. It was beautiful. So, I obviously took some photos. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next Friday, but keep your eye out early next week. Um, we might be popping up with something fun. So thank you very much. Hope you all get some sewing in and I'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.